Peace be with you, Good Shepherd family, um, friends, the Advent curious, uh, all who are, are joining uh, me again for these reflections. I have two colics um, this week instead of one. I'm going to read the one, I'm going to pray the one that you're going to hear on Sunday, uh, and I'm also going to add the collect that is used in the Church of England um, for this Sunday as well. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, that your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at thy first coming did send thy messenger to prepare thy way before thee, Grant that the ministers and stewards of thy mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready thy way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at thy second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in thy sight, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. I've titled my reflection, based on the text for this Sunday, Rejoicing in the Great Reversal. The good news of Jesus Christ is presented in the Gospels as a series of great reversals, with the cumulative effect that it is itself the great reversal, comprising them all. Darkness shall be made light. Falsehood shall be overcome with truth. Wickedness will be transformed into righteousness, defilement into holiness, death into life. The high and mighty and the poor and oppressed will switch places. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Another way of saying all this is that suffering will be turned into joy. As the ancient name for this Sunday, called Gaudete, is Latin for the imperative. Rejoice! Be joyful! The Gospels saw all of this as a straight line from Christ back to John and the prophets, especially Isaiah's school of prophets, which our Old Testament readings have been coming from this Advent. The message of the prophets, and of the New Testament as well, is that the worst of human misery and suffering comes from human sin, ours and our fellows. What is sorely hindering our natural God-created desire for happiness as much as sin does? This makes me think of the classic bad dad turning to his kids and shouting, You better act happy or so help me when we get home. I also think of the song in Fiddler on the Roof, where we are told, God wants us to be joyful even when our hearts lie panting on the floor. But God the Father is not a bad dad. That's our projection, fed to us by human sin. Our Father invites us to be joyful and makes it possible for us to be joyful. Our joy consists in Him. God is exactly what God offers us. Paul calls on God in our, one of our readings to, quote, sanctify us entirely, close quote, in body, soul, and spirit. 
Being made holy and righteous magnifies and lifts us into God's joy. And it is our expectation not only that this will be so in the future that God has for his children, but even now. Notice all the verbs in Mary's song are past tense, even though she is not yet born the Son of God. For the one proclaimed by John and the prophets declared the beginning of the year of the Lord's favor. And we are already living in it, even though we do not yet see the fullness of our joy. I ask you to see this Gaudete Sunday not merely as God giving us a break from Advent penitential preparation and waiting, but as showing us how intimately our repentance and our joy are tied together. I remember when I read Catherine of Siena for the first time, how joyful she was when she prayed that God would send her purgatory in this life rather than after her death. Her joy seeps out of her writing every time she asks God for this, pure and unfeigned. Even though the collect I added as an extra this week calls for the hearts of the disobedient to be turned to wisdom and justice, this turning is towards joy, away from sorrow, and towards joy. If you're looking for a song to sing, today. Take another look at Joy to the World. Examine the lyrics before you sing it. There's no mention of the nativity anywhere in it. Even though we all associate it with Christmas, I say that it is an Advent hymn, and it shouts, Joy to the World, just as Psalm 126 does. Let us be magnified. Let us rejoice greatly, even if our hearts are panting on the floor. Let them be stirred up by God's power to find their joy in him and to manifest that joy for all to be warmed by. For God is turning our sorrow into joy.